So moving into this second phase of the project, we've kind of reached the base of the mountain, which is to say we've done the work up until the point at which we're going to actually start the very steep climb to get to a plateau where the values are really well established and the shapes are designed in a very dynamic and hopefully close to final expression. So pushing further into value and design, we need to consider what the relationship in between those two factors is. Also things like proportion and gesture. Moving further into value and design, it's gonna be instructive for us to consider what we mean when we say design. I find that there's a pretty good metaphor in terms of the way we think about gesture when considering design. A straight line, for instance, has almost no gesture whatsoever. If we bend that line outward in a couple of positions, we can come to the place where we have an S-curve that gives us just a little bit of gesture. If we extend those angles further and further out from the center line, we increase the sense of gesture in that line segment. For me, I think also in this progressive sense about shape design. A square, of course, is one of the most basic and rudimentary shape designs that we can make. As we continue to pull out the edges and angle breaks of that square, adding more and more complexity, more and more angles, we eventually come to the place where that square is no longer so basic. It has taken on a much more dynamic configuration that can really stop being abstract and start being representational. So if we are increasing the sense of design in a drawing, we're then increasing the complexity of the shapes in that drawing. We have usually more angle breaks. We might even have some curved lines. And all of this is gonna be in the service of a greater degree of naturalism. We're trying to get to the place where our design resembles our subject almost perfectly. We have to also consider then, how does value interact with this process? I find that it's best to take a kind of stepped approach, which is to say, every time I increase a little bit the sense of design, I also increase a little bit the contrast in the values. My first lay-in of shadow value is usually pretty light. This goes along with the fairly generic shapes that I'm laying that value into. Once I create a little bit more complexity in those shapes, I also increase the value. Part of the reason is because I believe that there is a kind of perceptual effect that design has and that value has. So if we have very generic shapes in our drawing and values that are really fully expressed, it causes a kind of dissonance for me. And so I feel like I'm looking at a very finished but super generic drawing. The same thing happens if we have a super complex design in our drawing from a linear and shape perspective, but then our values are really, really light and not well expressed. That also gives us a sense of dissonance. In truth, if I'm splitting hairs though, I will say complex design lives a little bit more easily on its own than complex value does. Let's go back then also to how do we produce a darker value without also enhancing the sense of inflexibility in the drawing. If we zoom way into our drawing, it's easy to start to think about your value applications as kind of pixels, which is to say these dots of values dispersed on the surface of the paper. And what we want to do, rather than making our well dispersed pixels darker, is to instead focus on filling the gaps in between those pixels. So we're not so much making the values darker in and of themselves, we're simply making a clearer concentration of that light value. By increasing this sense of unity in our values, we'll increase the overall sense of contrast in between light and dark. Eventually, we'll come to a place where darkening those values is advantageous for kind of completing our project. But in these middle interim stages, we need to kind of figure out a way to get that strong effect without fully committing to the design. And so this concept of value as pixels and pixelation, I think is really useful. This plane of your head shows us pretty clearly what the hierarchy of value is on a head that is posed similar to the one that I'm drawing. The clearly apparent way the central planes reveal themselves as being the lightest is a great example of how well-organized and unified planes show both form and luminosity. In a way, this head is made to show us how we should be able to see the head through our mind's eye. As these ideas become more and more thoroughly understood, you will be better able to process the visual world through this lens. Artists like John Asaro through this three-dimensional sculpture of a head are attempting to illustrate to students the way that we can materialize and understand with a degree of specificity how a form turns in relationship to a light source. So often for students, the clarity of these big forms and how values are used to affect them can be hidden by the almost infinite detail that nature puts in front of you. So while this head in and of itself is not naturalistic and may not be exactly in the proportion or arrangement as the features of the head you're drawing, what it does contain is the essence of a concept. Values must be simplified and smaller forms must be subordinated to the simplified big form of your subject.
Our sense of volume is finally starting to become visible. So is the more recognizable appearance of the features of the face, and so it can become harder and harder to look past them. So in this moment, we can search for guidance in the simplest of forms, the sphere. Studying the light and form of the sphere, we can reveal the trajectory of the value transitions that we find on the much more complex form of our portrait. Here, we should be careful to avoid broken transitions and misplaced assumptions about the form. The more value we have in the drawing, the more organization is necessary. By organization here, I just mean making sure that each phase of the form is represented by an accountable and unified value. Here we can see a simplification of the values that turn the form of this sphere. The application of values in your drawing should be simplified in this way so that each value you apply should fit into a group of comparable values. Your assignment in this moment is to search through the light shape in your drawing for these groups of value. Consider that the left hand side of the forehead is one of the highest key areas in the entire drawing. When we look for instance at the light shape of the cheek on the right, it should compare favorably to that light area on the left hand side of the forehead and should therefore be quite a bit darker. The same thing with some of the values on the chin and on the left hand side of the cheek. An example of values that could not be considered accountable would be if both of those areas were just as light as the lightest light on the forehead. Concluding this stage, there are a few things that we should have taken care of. First, our values are well established, though we haven't placed our darkest dark, and they are also unified, both in terms of the plane that they are on, but also into their simplified group which of course fits neatly into the overall hierarchy of value. The features of the face will line up with each other well along a horizontal axis. They will be arranged to also correspond to the vertical center line of the head. This means that structural symmetry is well established and we can be prepared to look for any little idiosyncrasies in the model's features that will diverge from this symmetry, giving us that sense of the true character of our subject. Lastly, we will have sorted out the large gestural movements of the composition. The shape of the hair against the background, for instance. These interactions of dark against light and light against dark provide a movement and rhythm to the composition, creating interest and dynamic harmony. Having achieved all these things, we're going to be ready to enter the final stage of the drawing in which really considering rendering and finishing can commence because we have solved so many of these large problems in advance of that.